Have you ever been shoulder deep in an engine compartment trying to figure out how in the world you're supposed to access this component or a particular job and you want the engine, you wish the engineer was right there so you could just strangle him by the throat saying, how could you design something like this? Don't you guys think about what it takes to fix these cars? Well, we're going to answer that question in this edition of In the Workshop. I got to talk to Mike Allen and Mark Albrandt of Ford's Customer Service Engineering Division. And these guys are the ones who shared with me at least the Ford approach to making sure that the products they build today are as easy to service and easy to work on as possible. Uh, this actually started about 2005-2006, so we can't complain about models built, <laughs> built before then. But it's all an effort to, to realize that, yes, somebody has to go work on their cars after the engineers are finished building them. And this is what they call their virtual serviceability program. Uh, the whole idea is to use a digital tool to do those service procedures that we do every day before the car even gets to the production line. And it's a pretty cool process. Let's take a look. Of course, engineering is making a design change to an existing car or building a totally new car and before they get the first hard part bolted together they're building it all on computers so we've got a digital model we have a, a, a virtual product uh, right down to the nuts and bolts uh, then this takes this digital data and it sends it over to the service engineering team the virtual service engineering team where they can actually perform over 300 different service operations on that virtual vehicle and they can find out, is there room to get a hand in there? Is there a way to get that component out? You know, what's going to be involved in the process? And then they take that information. Uh, when they find problems that are going to make it hard in the real world to do certain things, they share that back with the engineering design team. And if at all possible, those concepts are put into work. And here's how they do it. Uh, again, they have a virtual mechanic, Jack and a lady mechanic named Jill. And these are the ones that are able to actually perform anything from an oil change to an engine R&R &R and do it on that virtual model. Now here's a good example of how they're trying to get to these three bolts. This is what we have to get to remove. They're going to be able to tell here, if you can see it in the picture, that, that Jack's hands are kind of interfered with by this, this rail. And they're going to know this has to be moved or a certain adjustment has to be made in order to get the hand clearance or to get the clearance needed to turn that ratchet in order to access the bolts that, uh, that they're trying to remove. With that information, they can again, turn that back to the design team who's building this car or making this update to a production model and say, hey, look, you know, can you give me another half an inch here? so that I can uh, make sure that the techs in the field can get to what they need to get to. Now here's an actual video that we're going to show you. I'm going to kind of interject this here. Um, forgive the blob in this particular picture. But what this slide is, there's, there's a brake booster assembly and we want to see what do we have to do to get it out. So this will actually simulate removing that brake booster and getting it out. Let's take a look at the video. Pretty cool, huh? So now they know this component has to be removed in order to get that brake booster out, or we have to pull it out, you know, two inches, turn it, you know, 45 degrees, angle it 30 degrees before, you know, whatever the case might be. And you've seen that in the service information systems as part of the R&R &R process, haven't you? Well, we haven't got to writing that up yet. We're still working on the virtual car. Here's another example of where we're looking for hand clearance. You know, here's the zone that's needed in order to keep make sure that Jack's hand has room to get to what he needs to get to. And again, if there's a, an issue where something's in the way, is interfering with that box, 
they turn that back to the engineering team and say, look, can you give us a little bit more room here so that Jack or Jill can get her hand in to do what's needed to, to be done. And it's not just the major jobs. I mean, here you can see where Jack's um, bent over. He's going to access a, a rear lamp bulb. Uh, what's going to be necessary to get to that? What can we do to make it a little easier? And I guess that's the other factor. What can we do to make the job a little easier? Here, a simple little rear panel access you know, makes it a lot easier to go in and change the bulb instead of having to remove the entire uh, assembly. That can save time, of course, and that's reflected you know, in the time allowances for certain jobs. Uh, here's another great example of something under dash. Uh, we kind of talked about this quite a bit. What's necessary to remove, in this case, the airbag connector for service? Well, you can see it's kind of hiding up underneath that, that crossover rail that we're all too familiar with. Uh, now, they do have the advantage of being able to see through all of that, but again, is there clearance for him to get to that? Can he remove that connector alone? Or is he going to have to remove components to do that? What can we do to make that job a little easier? That's all part of the virtual simulation. Now here's an example of where this has a real impact. Here's a, a new model of Escape with a turbocharged engine. And originally, there were three bolts holding the turbo flange uh, to the manifold. And uh, that was the way the engineers originally designed it. Now when they went in to try to see if Jack or Jill could access those bolts, they found that one required removal of a converter in order to access that third bolt. Well, that, almost, that was almost five hours worth of labor time involved. So they said, look, first of all, that bolt takes a lot of work just to get to that one bolt. I mean, there's only three of them. Can we do something different? And then the engineer said, sure, here's what we'll do. So instead of use, using a three bolt flange, they went to a clamp uh, around that connection um, which made it easy access just one side and that revised design cut that time almost an, uh, over half of what it would have been originally and of course makes it a lot easier for us in the field now I don't have to worry about getting that, that hidden bolt I can just loosen up that clamp and I can slide the unit off so next time you're working on a Ford product at least you'll know what they're doing to try to make it as serviceable as they can not every accommodation can be taken in, into account of course it takes a lot to build a car, and there are other factors that have to be considered. Uh, but at least, we know they're trying. And my thanks to Mike and Mark for taking the time to share this information with me, and now I get to share it with you. See you next time.